we lost one of our puppies. Well, she was she was two and a half. Uh, very suddenly. Yeah. It was extremely traumatic. So hopefully this straw is still a little dry. <laughs> Which is kind of a popular up and coming little fruit. It's like a kiwi, only Tiny. small like a grape. And you can eat it with the skin and everything. Mm -hmm. Okay, look at this. We did hit over 60, well over 60. It's 67 right now. I think it's about one o'clock. <laughs> he doesn't want to create an alcoholic ferment. <laughs> wow, oh yeah, a bunch of drunk chickens would probably, wow. Yeah, let's not do that. So then we also keep uh, organ meat in here. So this is uh, organ meat from six rabbits. So I'm also gonna put that in here because we will mix this into the feed. Welcome back to Uper Country Farms. Yep. So we are at the, tw what is it? The Six, 26th 26. of January already. Wow. It's almost over. And we have been <laughs> awful about making videos. Yeah. Uh, there's a pretty good reason that we haven't made videos in the last couple of weeks. We lost one of our puppies. Well, she was, she was two and a half, uh, very suddenly. Yeah. It was extremely traumatic, I think. Jose was, uh, took her out for her morning walk and she was running and barking one minute and gone the next. Uh, the vet thinks it was probably a heart attack um, or a blood clot. And so we struggled emotionally for, for at least a week. We were, I mean, the, it sucked the life out of the farm, I yeah. feel like. Like the heartbeat was gone for a while. Yeah, um, everything changed in, in a second. Yeah, and Jose really, these dogs are with us almost 24 seven. You spend a lot of time with the dogs, so it's, very hard when you don't have them yeah all of a sudden so we did make the decision we did go get another dog so we got an eight month old pup from a breeder downstate mm -hmm. he has zero training <laughs> he he is going to be a very good dog yeah he will he doesn't know a thing he doesn't know sitting <laughs> uh he doesn't know down he doesn't know his name <laughs> uh so we have a lot of work in front of us yeah we specifically made the decision to get another dog because we either have to do it now or we can't do it till fall. Yeah. Because the education and training has to be done before we start season. We just don't have time during the season to be doing the bulk of the training. And right now we have all day to work with him uh, and get him working. We'd introduce you to him, but currently he's, he's doing <laughs> chasing the ducks. Uh, he can't get to them. They're, we've decided to leave the birds all caged up. Um, until we uh, have him where he's not wanting to chase animals. Yeah. So. Yeah, and um, I think Youper or other dog, she will be more happy with the dog. Yeah, Youper and Eben were sisters. We got them from the same litter, mm -hmm. and Youper had never been a moment without her sister. Yeah. Uh, and so she was struggling uh, to being on her own. She did not like it. Uh, we had quit eating. Um, so today we have the puppy. This morning she ate a full breakfast. <laughs> uh, she really likes having him around, yeah. I think. Um, so yeah, so it was a decision we made and we're happy with it, but you will see us doing a lot of training probably <laughs> uh, in the next several weeks with him. His name is Tronic mm -hmm. and he is a doll. He's really cute, but has no clue about no. anything. No. <laughs> um, so it'll be a lot of work. All right, so let's talk about what else is happening here on the farm. Jose, what is the problem we're having right now? Well, we have, uh, well, what, what, what don't have? <laughs> what don't we have? Yeah. yeah, that's, so I'm out here, no jacket, yeah. uh, which means it's warm. Yeah. And we have no freezing temperatures. I don't even think we'll be able to open the ski hill this weekend because it's just no, too warm yeah, and we yeah. don't have equipment. Our ski hills are little tiny one run. We don't have, we can't make snow. Uh, our groomer cannot go through certain kinds of snow. We can groom if it's kind of a softer snow, but if it's icy, I, I mean, there's just not much we can do to uh -huh, run the ski uh -huh. hill. So we're going to have some extra time this weekend. So yep. we have some big plans. Yeah. What is the first thing? Yeah, you tell me what the first thing is. We've got one thing that we usually don't have to worry about this time of year. What is that? Oh, the chicken bedding. <laughs> yeah, the chicken bedding. Usually this time of year it's frozen. Yeah. So we don't have to worry about it. But what happens is it starts to thaw. That ammonia smell gets very strong in there. And while we try to put fresh bedding on top, when it thaws out, like 
it gets really wet in there yeah. uh, really fast. And so we're going to put some fresh bedding down today, probably a couple bales of straw in each of the areas. Mm -hmm. I will grab a couple, uh, maybe one or two um, straw bale, and I will spray by the uh, chicken area. So that will be uh, held, held to, to keep it more um, uh, dry. I don't know how for how long because right now it's so wet everywhere. <laughs> so, uh, but I think for now it will be it will be good. It will be okay. So hopefully this straw is still a little dry. <laughs> All right, right now I'm going to open this door, but I I should be I will be um be very careful because Tronic he will be try go inside and chasing the animals, and we don't want that. We don't want that. He don't. He don't. He doesn't understand anything right now. He, he's looking at. He's looking how 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 can how he can get inside. Come on, go. Come on here, come, hey, come, come on, no, leave it, leave it, hey, no, leave it, come on, leave it, leave it. What's another project um, that we, because I need to get my ordering done. So yeah. what's one thing out here that we need to go look at? We had to go to the field and check it out what uh, what kind of grapes we have. Yeah, the grapes, because we uh, have had uh, not real good luck with grapes, probably because <laughs> it's because of us, not necessarily. <laughs> People do grow grapes up here pretty successfully. Yeah, not us. <laughs> yeah, I think we've just screwed it up. And so we need to go out there. Last year we went through and uh, our friend Isaac helped us. We marked them all so we know what we need to order, but mm -hmm. I didn't write it down. So these are the grapes. We have sticks in the ground where there were plants last year. So I just need to write down which varieties and how many of each I need to order, just because we don't want to order too many. But we need to order quite a few. We've yeah. done a horrible job. So this row right here is kiwi berries. You can see we marked where they are. We're also going to be planting a bunch more kiwi berries over in our strawberry patch. Yeah. So, but we'll probably try to add here. And then that will eventually, the strawberry patch, which is over there, will eventually become our kiwi berry vineyard, which is kind of a popular up and coming little fruit. It's like a kiwi, only Tiny. small like a grape and you can eat it with the skin and everything. Mm -hmm. I order all of our grapes from Indiana Berry Company, mm -hmm. and we'll also be ordering our strawberries from them, mm -hmm. our raspberries from them, mm -hmm. and then kiwi berries oh, yeah. from them. So we have a big order to place with them, and I want to get it done by the end of the month, so that's a project we're going to work on. Yeah. The other thing is, uh, because now we can start working in the garage a little bit, it's nice and warm, we need to work on that member area. Yeah, we need to finish that. So we got to get the garage cleaned up, we also need to clean up the basement a little bit. So this is the entrance to our root cellar. It's really a basement, but we call it our root cellar. It stays, lately it's been about 38 through the really cold stretch we had, but I'd say it stays between 40 and 45 down there most of, most of the winter, and then in the summer maybe 55. It's a really nice temperature. We use it 
all year round, uh, especially during market season to keep most of our vegetables cool uh, when it's warm out. We have a bunch of squash down there that I started pulling everything out and making up uh, soups with any squash that we have that mm -hmm. are good, but there are some rotten squash down there uh, that we need to get pulled up, get fed to the chickens, or get them frozen just so we can throw them to the chickens later. Yeah. But there's, ugh. <laughs> I don't, you don't want to go down there in another month and find uh, rotten squash. Or maybe a, a little plant. <laughs> oh yeah, or a squash plant growing in the basement. That would probably not be cool. <laughs> so this time of year I do a bunch of canning and other things inside of the kitchen. So this week, uh, my neighbor and I canned a bunch of onion soup. So that's gonna go downstairs into the pantry. What I'm doing now is I made a creamy uh, butternut curry squash soup uh, that has coconut milk in it. And this we do not can, this we freeze. It freezes really nice and is very easy to take out of the freezer and thaw it. Last year we tried canning in quart sized jars because I heard you could do that. Uh, in some instances, and we cracked a lot of jars. I would say maybe, maybe 10% of the jars cracked, which, you know, then just ruins whatsoever's inside and, you know, ruins the jars. So we're not doing that this year. Instead, I ordered these quart size plastic containers. I'm not a fan of using plastic. I don't really like doing it, but I think in this circumstance, it's just, something we're going to be using so i'm going to i've let this soup cool quite a bit so it's not too hot because i don't want to put hot soup inside a plastic um, so this plastic will only have cooled soup in it and then it will go into the freezer get these out of the way one of our jars of onion soup didn't seal so that's what we're going to be eating for dinner later yummy All right, that's pretty good. Almost 10 quarts of soup here. And these will get moved out to the freezer. Oh, I know, because of this warm weather. Oh yeah, and we have uh, this beautiful greenhouse. Yeah, we have this whole greenhouse. <laughs> I just want to show you this in the greenhouse right now. 57 degrees. What time is it, Jose? 12, uh, 12. And it's only noon. I have a funny feeling it's going to be over 60 in there today. Especially if the sun stays out. It looks like spring, feels like spring outside. It's craziness right now. Yeah, I don't, uh, I don't think that's good. It's good for us because it's nice, but it's very muddy now which is usually only in the spring. Okay, look at this. We did hit over 60, well over 60. It's 67 right now. I think it's about one o'clock. If the sun stays as much as it is, it could get a little bit warmer in there, uh, but I think it's starting to cloud up just a little bit, but we're gonna go out and check it out. Feels like spring in here. So the problem we're gonna have is these, these are our planting mix and they're pretty frozen. Uh, it would take several days at these temperatures to get them where they're workable. So we probably, if we do some planting now, we're gonna have to bring in topsoil for them. It's like a trip to the nursery. And we are gonna bank a little bit on the fact that we are gonna, that these warm temperatures, we may get some dips that are cooler, but we are gonna bank that these warm temperatures are gonna keep us, are gonna allow us to start planting early this year. Yeah. Um, so we're gonna start getting some planting done. We need to do uh, spinach mm -hmm. and we wanna do some kale, maybe some lettuces. Uh, that means we need to get the germination room cleaned up and ready to go because it uh, we don't use it most of the year and so it gets become storage always. 
We need to clean that out. What's another thing you want to be doing in the germination room? I want to use the uh, greenhouse or the germination room for uh, something for the chicken. Yeah, he wants to do fodder for the chickens and yeah. the rabbits. Because this time of year, when we have snow, there's zero access to anything yeah. green. Yeah. Uh, and we've been looking at the you know the different options between doing fodder and uh doing fermenting mm -hmm. with the feed and we think fodder is a better option yeah. uh, for us at this time so we we maybe want to try fermenting at some point but i've done a lot of reading on it and there's a lot of mixed thoughts on whether or not it's that impressive and fodder i think does provide some greens mm -hmm. uh, gives them something interesting to do during the winter um, and eat so we're going to definitely do the fodder yeah, uh, is what we're going to focus on. Yeah, we don't want uh, uh, chicken too happy with the fer ferment. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he doesn't want to create an alcoholic ferment. <laughs> wow, oh yeah, a bunch of drunk chickens would probably... Wow, yeah, let's not do that. Mm. The seed that we have in the garage for oats and barley is kind of old. Yeah, it's very old. So I think probably from last fall or last spring or this last spring? Last fall, I think. I so I think we're going to just use it to feed out the chickens as is, and we will pick up new bags to sprout. Um, so that'll be on my to-do list this week, because we do want to do fodder and give it a try. Yeah. Although with these warm temps, we may not need fodder for very long. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the snow is going to melt very quick. I think so, yeah. Yeah, we definitely want to try it, so we're ready for it next year. Yeah. So... All right, I am going to head over to Stephanie's. I'm mm -hmm. doing some work with her today on scheduling so mm -hmm. we can get our schedule for the first few months of the year laid out because mm -hmm. uh, we have a lot of stuff to get done, her and I. Well, and you, but this won't include you. All right. All right. To work. The other thing is we're going to have to order some lights because generally during the season we use the germination room just until things sprout literally yeah. they're just this big and then we put them in the greenhouse mm -hmm. because we don't have any lights in there but if we want to do some stuff this time of year we need the extra light yeah. because we probably won't put them in the greenhouse for a couple of weeks so we're going to look into getting some lights mm -hmm. uh, to put into the germination room so that we can focus on doing that so that's we're going to get those ordered hopefully today yep all right um Okay, so we talked about fodder, but feed for the animals is one of our biggest expenses here on the farm. So we have, not only do we have chickens and ducks, we also have dogs and cats. Mm -hmm. And we have plenty of chicken in the freezers, mm -hmm. uh, rabbit in the freezer, we have organ meat in the freezer. So mm -hmm. we are going to, we've done it in the past, but we are going to make raw food for the cats and the dogs. Um, they really like it. Our cats really love when yeah. they're eating raw. Uh, so we want to work on that and so today I just need to get the chicken and rabbit out that we want to use and get it thawing. And then while I'm in here I need to get some chickens out because we are going to make dog and cat food, raw dog and cat food uh, on Sunday. So I want to start thawing the chicken. We have these totes that are specifically for meat here on the farm. We try not to mix anything that's vegetables and meat. So I'm going to use this to thaw it in. And we got some really big chickens uh, to do this time. Uh, so then we also keep uh, organ meat in here. So this is uh, organ meat from six rabbits. So I'm also going to put that in here because we will mix this into the feed. That's pretty much my last project for today. So this is just going to go in the house and sit for a cup for two days to thaw out. Then this time of year, the last thing is I spend a lot of time inside mm -hmm. doing things. We've been doing a ton of canning. I have a lot of stuff in the freezer that needs to be canned. You know, a lot of people prepare for the winter, which we do do, <laughs> but we have to prepare for the summer because we are so busy for three or four months out of the summer. And I hate spending money on groceries. You know, the other day I went to the grocery store to get greens for my sister. She was making a meal and she wanted some lettuce. Uh -huh. 
and going through the bags of lettuce at the grocery store, I was literally <laughs> appalled. When you grow your own stuff, it is so fresh and crisp and beautiful. And you know, you go to buy kale or lettuce at the market and it's, you know, like squishy and it's floppy and nah, yeah. I'm just, yeah. I, it's so nice to have our own stuff. Yeah. Um, and so I want, you know, we try to in the summer not to buy groceries as much as possible, but we do go through like a lot of beans. So I need to get those canned. We have a lot of stuff in the freezer. We make a lot of soups so that in the summer we can basically go into the freezer and just grab out what we need. Cause we don't have a lot of time for no. food prep. Mm -mm. Um, so yeah. And then uh, we also want to be growing some stuff so that we can start. We make shakes every morning for breakfast, mm -hmm. fruit and vegetable shakes. And I froze everything we need except for the greens. And so it'd be nice if we had some stuff growing in the greenhouse. Okay, I think those are our big projects for today, Jose. Let me just look. Oh, the last thing I wanted to talk about is that I'm inside working on our letters to the mm. members. Every January, oh, yeah. uh, all of our members get a letter from us talking about how much they spent on their membership last year. We do a You Choose oh. membership here. Yep. Hi, baby. What's your frisbee? I know. Okay. That's our youper. Okay, the frisbee youper. Um, so we do a You Choose membership, which means they can come to the table during the summer and pick out exactly what it is they want. Mm -hmm. And we just keep track of it. So in January every year, I let the members know what how much they bought last year, what size membership they should probably purchase again this year. Mm -hmm. um, and so I need to finish doing that. I have almost all of the members' letters sent out. I think I've got about five to finish. And uh, it's mostly the people that didn't use up their membership last year. So we have maybe five members that don't use <laughs> all of their membership yeah. every year. And we just roll it into the next year for them. Uh, I don't think too much about it. It works out fine. And usually they end up you know, adding on to it at some point throughout the year. Or even now they might say, yeah, we're gonna spend more yeah. uh, this year. And so then they end up adding to it. So it all works out, but I need to finish that because we're almost at the end of January yeah. now. All right. All right, should we go play in the mud? Uh, no. No, okay, well, let's walk out to the grapes. <laughs> I put my big boots on. Are you ready for the okay, walk? Yeah, let's go walk. All right, let's do it. All right. Tronic! Come on, buddy! He said, How can I get those chickens? He how said, I, I want to figure out how to get in there. <laughs> good boy! Good decision! Good decision! Yeah. If this weather continues like this, I think we will put back the. Yeah. Put the plastic back on that yeah. house. Yeah, I think if the snow melts back these next few weeks, we might try to get yeah. this, the but plastic I, on there. 